read you a story. <laughs> but I'll definitely read it to you. I'm going to read you the story because this, this was written by a pastor. Uh, I don't even know who it was. I, I, I should have known. I should have looked this up. He, uh, he was a pastor who wrote this in a book. And it's just a very interesting comment. And it fits exactly with what I want to say tonight. So these are his words. He says, Bob Villers was a great man. He was my neighbour. When I grew up, even through my university years, Bob was our next door neighbour. He lived there next door until he died. Bob helped my dad put a roof on our house. He helped concrete all the paths around our garden. He even helped us concrete the front porch. Then my dad helped him put a roof on his patio. As Bob got a little older, he used to pay me to cut the grass occasionally. Then he'd invite me, invite me in and I'd have a drink of coke with him and a piece of cake and it was great. Bob Villers was always so generous. I did deliver his paper to him for a few years. He was so good, he ticked so well. He was kind and he didn't get upset if our baseball or football or basketball went over the fence into his yard. Bob Villers was a great fisherman. He often brought some of his catch into us to share amongst our family. This pastor goes on to say, I don't remember Bob talking very much about religion. But it struck me that every Sunday morning, Bob would walk up the street with his Bible under his arm, come rain or shine. Every week, Bob walked to church holding his Bible. Every year, he would invite my younger brother and myself to attend the basketball service in his church. Most years we didn't go. Some years my friends went, so I went along too. Then when I was about 15, Bob invited us to a church on a Sunday. I didn't bother to go, but my younger brother did. Next weekend he invited us again. I still didn't go. But my brother did. My little brother, he went. And the same thing happened Sunday after Sunday after Sunday. Bob invited us to go to church with him. My brother started going. I even saw him reading the Bible a couple of times. Months later, Bob was still inviting himself, me and my brother, to go to church. But I wasn't interested. But then something happened. A singing group came to our school. And there were some very pretty girls in that group. They performed some excellent songs. And they told us they were going to sing at a local church on the coming Sunday. And they wanted us to come. Well, I never thought a lot about it until Bob from next door came and invited us to go to church that coming Sunday evening. He invited my brother and me to go to church with him. Well, I went. The singers that were at school were at this church service. That night, I became a Christian. I invited Jesus into my life. And I can say, life has never been the same ever again. Now, he goes on to say this. To my knowledge, Bob Villers never taught a Sunday school class. Probably never preached a sermon. Probably never held any meaningful position of leadership in any church anywhere. Well, he was an usher. He was a very faithful usher. He lived a simple life, but a life of integrity and of love for God and for his family and his friends. And occasionally he invited people to church. If he were an ice cream, I would describe him as a vanilla. Mind you, he would be the Hagen Dutz vanilla. <laughs> God works in ordinary people, in ordinary ways, in ordinary times, under ordinary circumstances. That's the message for the moment. Last week, during the summer series, we spoke about life and the importance and the value of life. If I could put one word on what I would like to see this year in my life, 
and in the lives of each one of you is this, to have some life. Because we read in John 10.10 10, that Jesus came that you might have life and have it in abundance. Now, we talked a lot last or a bit last week about this abundant life. What is abundant life? It's life for the full. And uh, you know, a conversation I had with Martin, I think I mentioned this last week, he said, wow, some of us really have an abundant life, don't we? <laughs> uh, yes, we do. Lives are very full. But, you know, abundant life is not necessarily the things that we do, but it's what we do with what we have. You follow what I'm saying there? It's the abundance that comes out of the heart that's really important. It's our relationship with God. That's what abundant life is about. So tonight, I want to talk about the power of ordinary. The power that you and I have. We're just ordinary people. Elaine and I often refer to ourselves as just plain garden variety people. Just ordinary. And I think most of us would fit into that category. Or mind you, I do see some extraordinary people around the place. But it's God who makes us extraordinary. I want to bring to you a scripture tonight, which is just, it really is. Yes, you'll never have favourites. I know every week I read my favourite, but I'm going to read to you tonight from Acts chapter 3, reading through a fair way. And it's a story that you know. But I've spoken about it before. You've read it many, many times. It's a powerful word of God in the ordinary, using ordinary people, in ordinary circumstances, in extraordinary ways. Hear the word of God from Acts chapter 3. Peter and John went to the temple one afternoon to take part in the 3 o'clock prayer service. As they approached the temple, a man, lame from birth, was being carried in. Each day he was put beside the temple gate, the one called the beautiful gate, so he could be from the people going into the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to enter, he asked them for some money. Peter and John looked at him intently and said, Look at us. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and woke him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk, then walking and leaping and praising God. He went into the temple with them. Now all the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When they realised he was the lame beggar they had seen so often on the beautiful gate, they were absolutely astounded. They rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw this opportunity and he addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is so surprising about this? Why do you stare as though at us as though we made this man walk by our own power or our godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of all of our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. This is the same Jesus you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. You rejected this, this holy and righteous one and instead demanded the release of a murderer. You killed the author of life. But God raised him from the dead, and we are witnesses to this day. Through faith in the name of Jesus, this man was healed. And you know how crippled he was before. Faith in Jesus' name has healed him before your very eyes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. That's a powerful word. Now I want you to, just, want you to consider this for a moment, because... This is such an ordinary day. Peter and John didn't wake up in the morning thinking, wow, what a great day, something extraordinary is going to happen today. No, they probably popped out of bed, went about their daily business, just the things that normally happen, had breakfast, probably had their prayer time, their small devotional time, had a little conversation, 
went and watered the flowers, whatever they might have done. It was an ordinary day. And I think that's evident by the scripture as we read, at 3 o'clock they were on their way to the prayer service. Now the Jews had at least three times of prayer a day, nine, midday and at three. There may be others as well. It just says in an ordinary way they were on their way to the three o'clock prayer service. Just ordinary circumstances. But something extraordinary happened. Have you ever noticed how opportunity always comes at the most inopportune time? It does. Opportunity comes when we least expect it, when we're not switched on to it, when we're not alert, and when we just not prepared, not ready for it. Lesson number one, always be prepared. I'm not saying that to you, I'm saying that to me. Because we need to be prepared. God brings opportunity to us always. Always there is a time of opportunity. Always. We live in a land of opportunity, in a day of opportunity. Another ordinary day. Well, it's only about half past six on a Friday, Saturday evening. It's just an ordinary time. But extraordinary things can happen. And as we read, do a bit of pre-reading to that particular passage of Scripture, we read that the apostles, the disciples, had been gathering together and they were beginning to see miracles, signs and wonders beginning to happen. But this is the first time we actually read or hear or see anything that's actually happened. They were just on their way to pray. They were going to the three o'clock service. And this fellow hops up and I've said it here before because we've actually spoken about this passage before. They, he asked for arms, A-L-M-S. He asked for arms and they gave him legs. <laughs> it's a great story. He wrote, Peter and John said that, look, the fellow were probably sitting there and they said, in the name of Jesus, we don't have anything. No silver or gold, but in the name of Jesus, we'll give you what we can. And this is what they said. Rise up and walk. Now he's probably sitting there thinking, oh yeah, come on. What's going on here? Another one trying to get out and giving me something. He wasn't expecting much. He wasn't expecting a lot. He was expecting a couple of coins. Hoping for a couple of coins, something small, minuscule. But they gave me all that they had powerful introduction to a new world that he had not expected. It was an ordinary experience in one sense because the power of God was there and made that, ex that ordinary, extraordinary. Now the question is, what happens in your, in your home just before you head off to church? Is your home not so bad at 5.30 in the evening, is it? You've had a day before you, but I know on a Sunday morning service, you know, it's a bit of a rush, particularly if I'm going out to the country, so we've got two or three hours drive. You know, you've got to be out quite early, uh, brush the teeth early and so on, and you're, you're gone. It's a bit of a rush to get there. But you can listen to some great praise and worship music, you can set all your down as you drive. But lots of us have lots of things happening in our preparation that we don't really stop to think about what's going on. This is the order. Do you see signs and wonders, miracles around you? Yeah, here's the thing. Most, I was thinking about this just through the, uh, the course of the day. Most of us don't see those instant miracles very often. Do they happen? Of course they do. Of course they do. Miracles are happening each day, but just that we don't see them. You see, we're not necessarily alert the way we ought to be. We're so lost in the ordinary, we think nothing much is going to happen today. Now I had a friend uh, who built a new home. And on the entrance, on the wall as you entered his home, just on the outside porch, he, he had a big brass plaque. And this is what it had. In 1858, on this day, nothing much happened here. <laughs> <laughs> Look, may or may not, if he wasn't there to know it. But, but on this day, what is going to happen here? Is God going to visit you? Is God going to come and pay you through His Holy Spirit? 
to say, take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. You know, I don't ever want to be anything other than ordinary. I really don't want to, you know, walk down the street and say, oh, look, there's who are here, someone famous. It's not just having a, an ordinary face, being ordinary people in an ordinary society. Because those people get lost. And not only that, they become uh, invested in themselves, they become almost proud of themselves. You see, God doesn't go with proud. He doesn't do proud. He wants humble. And I think the humble comes from ordinary. Why? As we look at the story of Christmas, which we've just looked at, it seems a long way away, but not very far back. As we look at the story of Christmas, who received that message of the birth of Jesus first? Ordinary shepherds in the field. How ordinary can you get? Ordinary people. And you know, talking about shepherds, I, I'm just thinking about it again during the week. The story of Moses. Yes, he grew up in a royal household in Egypt, but then he was out caring for Jethro, his father-in-law's sheep. He was just an ordinary shepherd. In fact, as you look at the story of Moses, he had no ability to speak very well. If Moses had walked in here, he wouldn't want to preach because he couldn't speak. He actually asked God to give his brother Aaron the ability to speak on his behalf. How ordinary can you get? Moses was ordinary, but he was called by God into an extraordinary position. You remember the story of the burning bush? Take off his shoes, he was standing on holy ground. I wonder today how many of us are standing on holy ground before God. It's a good question. Are we standing before God and is God speaking to us? That's a better question would be, are we listening? Or are we so intensely involved in what we're doing, what we're on about, that we've lost the focus? The focus is on us. We become navel gazers rather than listeners for the presence of the Holy Spirit and what He might be saying to us. Then I thought of Samuel. There was young Samuel, a little boy, laying in bed, and he heard a voice. And he went out to Eli, wasn't it? The priest, and he said, did you call me? No, I didn't call you, I didn't snore Okay, go back to bed. A few minutes later, the same thing, he heard this voice. Eli, did you call me? No, no, get back to bed, it's late. It happened again. And Eli, Eli woke up. And I think this is really one of the keys that we need to be awake to what God is doing. We need to be awake and hear what God is saying. He is calling us. He's calling us by name. And He's calling us with what He wants for our lives. Now, maybe something to do. It may not be. It might just be to encourage us, to build us up. That we know that we're in a relationship with Him. You see, one of the things that ordinary people can do really well is rely on God. We hear that voice and we think, what's that? Is that God speaking with me? Not sure. So we go and chat with someone. Would God speak to me in that way? Well, let me say this to you. When God speaks, I believe He always confirms what He says. There'll always be a confirmation when God speaks. I hear lots of people say, God told me this, or God told me that. I'm never going to argue with that. I'm never going to argue. But I wonder, is that God, is that your own word? When God speaks, He always confirms. Hold on to that. Listen for that confirmation. And when you hear that confirmation, know that God may well be speaking to you. So as we step into this new year, as I said, this is a summer series, I'm going to keep it relatively short. And as we step into this new year, my prayer for each one of us is this, that we would keep our ordinariness. Is that a word? You'll do for tonight. If we can be ordinary people in a world that's trying to be anything but ordinary, 
Have you noticed the advertisements that try to get you to have the best, the greatest, to do the things that no one else is doing, to set yourself apart from everyone else? I don't know that that's from God. I believe God is speaking to us as his people here at Victor Harbour and a little bit beyond. He's speaking to us. He is calling us by name. But this is what the message is that I believe is for you and me tonight. That is, that he loves us as we are, that we are works in progress, and he hasn't finished with us yet. Let me ask you this. Have you been to Adelaide lately along by the Plymouth Hospital? On those road books? Oh wow. You really have to know what's where you're going. You've got to watch the lane that you're in. You've got to read the signs all together while there's traffic around you. Otherwise, you'll end up in the wrong spot. I think that's the message for us at the moment. Listen to the word of God. You know, you might see big signs that men are word, but I believe God is the word in our lives. And he wants us in the right place, in the right lane, to take us to the right place. And if we hear and read the signs, we will be on the right path. We will go to the place that he wants us to go. Tonight's word is a word of encouragement to all you ordinary and extraordinary people, including me. God hasn't forgotten us. God loves you so much. We are works in progress. Just not finished with yet. So if you're ordinary, if you've made some mistakes, you can put your hand up because you're in good company. Ordinary people on an extraordinary journey with an extraordinary God who has a love for you that is greater than you can ever, 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 ever imagine. God hasn't forgotten you. Now I know there are people here who are, are deep in prayer for certain circumstances within their lives that they don't seem to be working out. You sort of wonder what's going on. God, have you forgotten me? God hasn't forgotten you. He will never forget you. He is in the business, in the process of working it out. And you know, I, I, Eli and I, I'm going to talk about today. We haven't done it for a while, we must do that again. We had a prayer journal, and when we were praying for something, we would write it down. I was talking about that, not Eli. We haven't seen it for a while. But we, if you go back to your prayer journal and the prayers that you've been praying, just check them out, and you'll discover that God has answered those prayers. Not necessarily the way you want it. Because God's better than that. He knows much more than that. He works his purposes out in your life in amazing and beautiful ways. He hasn't finished with us yet. We are works in progress. So, garden variety people. One of the troubles with being a garden variety person is that weeds come up. Weeds not only come up, but they can strangle us. They can attack us. They can crown us in. And if you're like me, especially in these warmer days, we need a little bit of space, don't we? God is working his purposes out. I want to encourage you tonight to look around and see what God is doing in your life. Look around and see the answers to your prayers. Yeah, no, it doesn't always go the way we want. But I love Romans 8, 28. All things work together for good to those who love God and are fitting into his plans. All things. That means everything. Everything works together for good to those who love God and are fitting into his plans. You fit into God's plans? How do you fit into God's plans? Just ask Jesus into your life. That's God's plan for you to have a relationship with him. That's what it's about. So as you have a relationship with him, all that happens to you is working out for good. I don't know about you, I find that incredibly encouraging. When things go wrong, as they tend to, I've got 
heard of someone just a couple of days ago who was driving on and they broke down. Broke down in, in not very pleasant circumstances, a very awkward spot. But the way that's all worked out, we just heard today how that all worked out. It's worked out beautifully. If you saw someone on the side of the road, would you stop? Someone came down and stopped. Gave some assistance. Now we're off again. Do you stop? Do you help people along the way? If someone says to you, I'm in a solid life here, do you help? Perhaps this is the problem. We live in a society where there's pride that holds us back from asking. There's pride that stops us from seeking some assistance. But if you're like most of us, we love to help people. Someone rang me today with some from a long, 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 long way away with a few issues and, and all I could do was pray for them at that moment. But I know that the right people are on their way already to help those people. Why? Because they actually asked and someone was overjoyed to be able to go and assist. Most of us, when something goes wrong in someone's life, say, what can we do to help? Sometimes people say that tongue in cheek, but most of us want to help. How much more does God want to be in our lives and help us? Be encouraged in the ordinary circumstances of the day. This morning when you woke up, it was just another ordinary day. As you stepped into this building front, it was another ordinary church service. Our worship, well, it's first quite extraordinary, really, but the things that we normally do, God is in them. He's revealing more of himself to each of us each time we meet together. You know, as I keep saying, I'm closing now, one of the joys of coming together as a group of Christians is this. You know, I can see a little glimpse of God here. You can see a little glimpse of God here. And we put those little glimpses together, we actually get a bigger picture of God, a greater understanding, and a better understanding of perhaps where we fit into that picture. The importance of it coming together. And you know, the scriptures talk about people falling, <coughs> excuse me, was that a bug? <laughs> people talk about, the, the scriptures talk about people falling away from meeting together. That's something we must never do. Always, whether it's in a building and a group like this, but we need to meet with other Christians. Why? Because it's when we're with others that we get a bigger glimpse of who our God is. So let me encourage you as ordinary people with an extraordinary God who wants to work in and through your life into his community. Let me encourage you with a prayer. Will you join me in prayer? Let us pray. Father God, as we have just reflect upon those words of scripture, how Peter and John, just ordinary people, challenged and changed uh, the life of that cripple on the side of the temple gate. When they said to him, we don't have silver and gold. We'll give you what we have. Rise up and walk. Lord, tonight we pray for that sort of faith. We pray that we would be bold in the name of Jesus. To reach out and touch the lives of those around us and make a difference in those lives. On the night, Lord, as we just reflect upon our lives, we thank you for that life that you've given us. And with life comes opportunity. And with opportunity comes more life and more opportunity, but more than that, a greater knowledge of who you are and a bigger vision and a bigger picture of your love for us, which was demonstrated through Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the presence of his Holy Spirit be with each one of us this day and forevermore. Amen. Blessings and have a, just a wonderful week. We want, we're not going to have a song to close, but we didn't organise it with the worship team, so we're just going to close now with uh, just some joy, have a chat with people, stay and chat as long as you like. But I'd love to see you tomorrow at the family picnic over at Camp Reserve, just down past the hospital. As soon as you get to Camp Reserve, under those trees there. So blessings and have a wonderful week.